Hello, Instagram and Facebook world. Ben France back here with uh, episode two or lesson number two of Guitar 101, part of the lunchtime lessons sessions that I'm doing uh, during the COVID-19 outbreak while I'm working from home. Uh, for those of you just joining me today, I will do a kind of a quick review of what we went over on the first session on Wednesday, uh, April the 1st. Uh, the point of these lessons, just kind of recap for everyone that's new, is essentially to help people start out playing guitar. If you've ever wanted to learn how to play, but you're not really sure how to, or if you've ever been, uh, maybe you know a little bit about playing guitar, but not a whole lot about it. Maybe someone gave you a guitar, maybe a parent or a family member left the guitar with you or something like that. And you're wanting to learn how to play, but you weren't really sure where to start. This uh, is designed for you. These lessons are designed for you. So it is going to be the basics of guitar playing. And each lesson, I'm doing streaming these live at 1.15 p.m. Uh, Central Time in the United States. I believe that's a GMT minus six for those of you elsewhere in the world, possibly. And they'll be anywhere from about 25 to probably 35 minutes long. I am currently working a day job and I'm working from home. So that's given me the opportunity to do this and share some knowledge that I've amassed over the three plus decades of playing guitar with other people who might be interested in learning how to play as well. So uh, hopefully everything is coming through clear and you can hear me clearly and see me clearly. It looks like the stream is working correctly. Uh, so we will dive in. Let's start by going kind of through a uh, review of what we learned last time and then we'll dive into some new material for today. So starting out basic mechanics of a guitar itself, some basics about the different body parts of the guitar and so on, just so you know how to familiarize yourself with it uh, and you know what I'm talking about when I'm telling you to do certain things on certain parts of the body of the guitar or on the guitar. So an electric guitar, acoustic is going to be very similar though for the concepts that we're covering in these short brief lessons. So the guitar, you have uh, basically three main parts of the guitar. You have the body of the guitar, which is this green and blue part on this Ibanez RG that I'm using for these lessons. You have the neck of the guitar, which is the part that looks like a plank of wood sticking out from the body. And then you have the headstock of the guitar, which is the part up here on the end that's black on this guitar. Uh, within those three main parts, there are some subcategories you need to know about. Uh, if you're playing an electric guitar, these things here are called pickups. They're what amplifies your signal or picks up the signal so it can be amplified by a guitar amp. And for those of you on YouTube, I'll hold that up. Those are the three little things here in the middle. This is called the bridge of the guitar, right behind the pickup, closer towards this end of the body. Yours may look a little different depending on what type of guitar you have, but your guitar will have some sort of bridge on it. On your neck, which remember is this piece of wood here, the front fort facing part of it, facing away from your body when you're holding the guitar, is the fretboard of the guitar. It's called the fretboard because it has these little metal things on it. See these little things look like wires here? Those are the frets on the guitar. Then this is called the headstock of the guitar, like I said previously, or the head of the guitar. This has the tuning pegs on it that lets you tune the guitar. It may look a little different depending on your scenario. Ah, some other things we need to cover, just kind of re real quick revamp. Uh, you typically play guitar, at least when you're starting out, I recommend you play guitar with a pick. That is this thing here in my hand. You will hold that and put it up there for Facebook as well. And hold that between your thumb and your first finger. Don't put a death grip on it like you're trying to choke the life out of it where your fingertips are white. But don't have a hold of it so loosely that it will flop out of your hand when you use it to attack the strings on your guitar. Your pick should be pointed somewhere kind of similar to kind of perpendicular to the tip of your thumb. If you can see that on my thumb, the pick is kind of pointed almost towards the end of the thumb. Not exactly, but close. That's where the triangular part of it should be pointed. Uh, where do you rest your arm? What do you do with your arm? Your right arm. You want it resting on the body of the guitar here somewhere. Uh, it doesn't have to be... Well, you want that so it isn't chicken wing. So you're not holding your arm up here like this. If you do that, you're going to wear yourself out really quick. So rest it somewhere on the body of the guitar where it's comfortable and where your hand naturally falls between the end of the neck, between the end of this part of the guitar and the bridge. You want your finger that's got the pick in it somewhere in this area between where my two fingers are right now. So get it where it's somewhere comfortable. For me, on this guitar, it has a, a contour on it for the shape of your arm. You'll see that there up by my head where it kind of dips off. So I usually will have my arm setting somewhere like that where my picking hand falls somewhere right in the middle, about towards this middle pickup on the guitar is where usually my thumb and forefinger are gonna be. 
how do you hold the guitar when you're playing? Uh, you want to have a pretty good posture. You want to sit upright. You do not want to be slouching over because you will hurt your back and it will make it harder to do certain things as you get further into it. Uh, you can have the guitar set two different ways, either in traditional classical style, which is how I'm setting for the purpose of these lessons, which means that the body of the guitar, this little cutout part here, and most guitars, even acoustic, are going to have that, is resting, if you're right-handed like me, on the top part of your thigh, upper part of your leg, on your left leg. That way, the guitar gives you really good posture where you're setting with the guitar almost straight in front of you. You can also put it off to the side here. What... I came to call cowboy style based on a few different names I've heard for it, but I recommend classical style as far as holding the guitar when you're first starting out because that puts you in a very good posture. Remember again, be setting upright. Don't be killing yourself by locking yourself into place or anything like that, but get yourself setting upright where you're comfortable and in a good posture. Uh, next things we learned, and this is just review again of the first lesson, how to, what you do with your pick. You can do one of two different things. You can either pick the strings individually like this. You'll hear the individual notes. Show that for you, those of you on Instagram. Or you can strum the strings like this, which means you're dragging your pick in one motion across multiple strings, in this case, all of them. So you can strum or you can pick those. Okay. Uh, other things that we learned last time, how to fret a note. Remember I said these little metal bars here, these are called frets. However, you do not put your finger directly on the fret to fret a note. Whatever note you're trying to play or whatever fret you're trying to play, you want your finger to be directly before that fret, somewhere in this open space here. So as the example I gave last time, if I'm telling you to fret a note on the second fret, you want it here in the space between the first and second metal bars. You want to press down on that string enough that the note sounds, if you're not pressing down hard enough, it's going to sound like this. You want to be somewhere like this. If you press too hard, you're going to bend the string. You're going to adjust the, the effect the pitch of it. You'll hear the difference here as I press down really hard and bear down on it. That's good. This is getting too tight. You hear the difference? So just somewhere there where you get enough that the note rings out cleanly, but not so much that you're bending the string and not so light that you're getting something like this. Okay? We also learned the strings, what they're named both numerically and the letters of the, the letters which represent the notes the strings are. Strings are numbered on a typical standard guitar that's a six string guitar. They're numbered one through six, first through sixth string. A little counterintuitive to what you might expect. The string numbers get smaller the further down away from you you go. Meaning that if you've got six strings, the one closest to your head, right here, the thickest, is your string number six. Then going sequentially down from there is fifth string, fourth, third, second, and first. The notes that those strings play, so the letter that represents them. Going from the thickest to the thinnest, closest to you, the farthest away once again, is an E, is the sixth string. An A is the fifth string. A D is the fourth string. A G is the third string. A B is the second string. And, and another E is the first string. So, sixth E, fifth A, fourth B, third G, second D, and first E. We also learned, final thing last time, was how to play an A chord or an A major chord. Uh, it's based on a certain fingering pattern. So what you do to play an A chord is you take your second finger, your knotty finger, you put that on the second fret of string number four. So counting from the top, that'd be six, five, four, or from your thinnest string to the bottom, it's one, two, three, four. The one that I said previously was a D string. So put your finger on the second fret of that. That gives you an E is the note that it gives you. You put your ring finger, your third finger, on the second fret of the third string, the one right below that. That gives you an A note. You put your pinky, your littlest finger, on the second fret of string number two, the one right below that. That is a C sharp. So if you play those three notes along with the fifth string, which remember I said was an A, open, meaning you have no fingers on it, and the first string, the thinnest one, which is an E, no fingers on it, you get this for your chord. That is an A major or an A chord in common terminology.
and you strum that for those of you on Instagram if you're trying so you can see this you just strum straight across the strings this is kind of hard for me to do folks I apologize but like this so there is your a major chord or an a chord so that brings us up to uh, today for those of you that didn't get to see this first video I know obviously that I went through this pretty quickly it is available here on my it's available on my Facebook channel uh, facebook.com slash Ben France music I uh, Save the live stream onto that. It's also available on my YouTube channel. If you just search YouTube for Benjamin France Music, it's on there as well. So you can refer back to that video. So let's move forward. We are already about 10 minutes into this video. I didn't want to take this long to review, but I'm still kind of getting the hang of exactly how this is going to flow. So today I want to work on a couple things to add to get you more comfortable with the guitar and more comfortable with uh, certain techniques that you're going to use as we continue to progress forward on playing. First thing we want to talk about is related to your picking. So far I've showed you that you can strum a note by raking your, your pick across the strings like this, or strum up the strings, or you can pick a note by doing individual notes like this. Now notice what we're doing here, everything we're doing is, is down. It's called a downstroke, meaning that it's going down away from our head towards the floor. That's a downstroke as a strum, downstroke as picking. You can also do upstrokes as well. This hopefully isn't jumping too far ahead, but this is something you're gonna need to know because it helps with strumming patterns when you're trying to play chords. So an upstroke would be just the opposite of what you'd expect. If this is a downstroke doing this, an upstroke is doing this, going from the highest string to the lowest, coming back towards your head. So downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke. Same thing with individual picking, down picking, upstroke picking. Okay, so practice that with me a few times. So do a downstroke followed by an upstroke. So once again, keep your pick held enough that you don't drop it, but don't put a death grip on it. Run down the strings, and then back up the strings. Down the strings, up the strings. Let's do that three or four times. Downstroke, upstroke. Down strum, up strum, down strum, up strum, down strum, up strum. So let's do also the individual picking. Remember we said for purposes of what we're learning, we're calling the individual notes picking as opposed to strumming. So picking down on all six strings and picking up on all six strings. Let's try that together three or four times just to get the hang of what it feels like. Notice our left hand's not doing anything right now. We're just playing the open notes on the guitar. Okay, so that's down strokes and up strokes. Down picking, upward picking, and you don't have to expect to be anywhere near that fast. But that just gives you the basics of how to do this. Now, with those two things, there's also what's called alternate picking, where it's combining those two. You're alternating between picking down and picking up. Hey, Jackie, thanks for tuning in. Just doing uh, my second session of. A uh, guitar 101 basic guitar lessons for people just wanting to uh, start learning how to play. So uh, I posted the first video on my YouTube and on Facebook and you're kind of coming in about 10 minutes or so into this guy. So uh, getting back to what we we're talking about, let's do alternate picking. What an alternate picking means is that you're picking alternating what you're doing. You're alternating between going down and going up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. So <coughs> Excuse me. Practice that with me a few times. Let's stay just on the sixth string, the thickest string. Remember the one closest to your head. What letter was that? I'll give you a minute to answer. What do you think about it? That is an E string. So let's, yeah, that is too bad. You should definitely pick up another guitar, Jackie, especially right now when we're all stuck at home and give us something to do. So uh, let's practice that together. On the sixth string, let's pick down, pick up, pick down, pick up. Notice when I'm doing this, and this is something we covered on the first episode, we're not moving our whole arm. We're not doing this because that's gonna wear you out. That's very inefficient. You're not picking by going 
like that, you're just moving your wrist just a little bit. So down, up on the sixth string. Down, up, down, up. I'll go slow. Down, up. So let's practice that a few times together. We're going to do it on each string. We're going to start on the sixth string. So on the thickest string on your E string, no hand, left hand not doing anything. I just have a habit of resting it there. So I'll bring it down here not to confuse anybody. Let's practice that. So sixth string, your E string, the one closest to your head. We're going to pick down, pick back up, bringing the pick back up towards you from the bottom of the string further away from you. Pick down from the top of the string, pick up from the bottom of the string. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Try that a few times on a few different strings because it'll feel different as you move your hand across the strings in the different positions. So I'm going to jump down to the fourth string, which is the D string. Third one from the top, closest to you. Fourth one from the bottom, farthest away from you. So we're going to go down, up, down, up. Try to make your picking even to where when you pick down and then when you pick up, your notes are about the same volume and they sound similar. What you don't want to be doing is you don't want to be, and, and it'll take you some time. You're probably initially not going to be able to be do it, to do it real even. But what we want to do is work on that sounding like the same note. We don't want it to be something like, like this, where we've got, and then real lightly on the bottom, or vice versa. We don't want a light down pick and then a hard up pick. We want to try to sound, make them sound similar, so like this. So. So let's do that a few times. On the fourth string, on your D string, pick down, up, down, up, down, up, pardon, down, up, down, up. Okay? Let's jump down to our highest string, our E string, the first string farthest away from our head. Do the same thing. Down, up, down, up. Down, up. Okay, we have the understanding now. We get the basic idea of that, right? And practice that. I'll tell you that this is the, the biggest thing with anything, and I'm sure everybody watching this has gotten to know this, but you're only going to get as good at this and as comfortable and natural at this as the amount of time you put into it practicing. Let me give you an example. When I, sorry, I've got notifications popping up on my phone, uh, Instagram, I apologize about that. When I first started playing, and this is kind of extreme because I was that kid that was 13, 14 years old and didn't have a whole lot of social life and didn't do a whole lot. It was kind of a nerdy music kid. When I first started playing, though, it would not be unusual for me to play three or four hours a day practicing. I don't expect probably a lot of people are going to have the time to do that, especially if you're over the age of 18 and you're have bills and responsibilities and that sort of thing. But the more you practice, the easier this gets, the more fluid it becomes to you. So don't just sit here and work on something that we're talking about in these lessons, spending the 20 minutes with me or so doing this. And then don't touch it until Monday when we meet again, because you're not gonna progress that way. You need to spend time on this on your own in order to get better at it. So. We're gonna cover that real quick again on downstrokes and upstrokes and the individual picking. And then we're gonna move on to the next exercise I want everybody to work on. But please practice these in between now and the next time that we see each other on Monday, which I believe Monday is the 6th of April at the same time. So back to the sixth string. Let's do down stroke and up stroke, or down pick, up pick four times. One. Let's do down stroke of strumming and up stroke of strumming. So across all the strings, just with them open, left hand not doing anything. And then finally, remember I talked briefly there about alternate picking, which is what we were just doing, going between the two notes back and forth. And you can get, you'll get where you can do alternate picking really fast. My right hand's not as fast as it was at one time, so I'm starting to play more now than I have in quite some time, but you'll get where alternate picking can start being things like that, or like, and I use a very thick pick doing that, but, so you'll get faster, but you need to practice on just the basic of the movement, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, 
Down strong, up strong. Down strong, up strong. Down strong, up strong. Go across all the note, all the strings. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Practice that a lot because the better you get at that, the more your right hand will start gaining dexterity where it knows what to do. It won't feel so foreign to you and you'll get smoother and more comfortable doing that, but you need to practice that. So let's do another exercise now. Uh, obviously we learned our A chord last time, that A major chord, which was using our second, third, and fourth finger. If that's the first time you've ever played a chord, you've probably noticed that your fingers really hurt, probably, if you practice it very much at all, and you probably also noticed that it was not real easy to do. It was not real easy to hold the notes down where it wasn't too bent, but where it wasn't too light, like that. So what that comes down to is that comes down to, once again, dexterity and strength in your fingers and your left hand. A really, really good exercise for getting better at this that I learned a long time ago. This was in a Guitar World magazine probably close to 30 years ago. It was a uh, interview session that was, hey, Stephanie, thanks for joining. Just doing a Guitar 101 episode two here, uh, basic guitar lessons for people that are just wanting to learn to play guitar. So this exercise I learned probably, like I said, almost 30 years ago. It was in a Guitar World magazine that uh, Steve Vai had written an article on his, his practicing techniques when he was first starting out. If you don't know who Steve Vai is, depending on your age, I wouldn't be surprised by that by any means. If you're my age and you don't know who Steve Vai is, you probably have obviously never been a guitar player before. If you do know who Steve Vai is, you do know that he is, pardon my language, kind of a... a well, let's just say he's a very, very good guitar player, to put it really nicely, and a very incredible musician. So anyway, so this is an exercise I learned from that article with Steve Vai to help build up your dexterity and build up your strength in your fingers on your left hand. Because remember, these are how we make the notes, or with these fingers. Otherwise, we can't do a whole lot if our left hand doesn't do much on a guitar. So... The way to do this exercise is you're going to use one finger per fret and you're going to go very, very slowly and you're going to just start working your way up the neck of the guitar. At this point, we're not really going to focus on what notes you're playing. It's just a matter of getting more comfortable with your fingers stretching the way they need to stretch and doing the things they need to do to start getting your left hand comfortable and your left hand getting more proficient at working. So what I want you to do is take your first finger Put that on the first fret of the sixth string, the thickest string. That's going to give you this note, which is an F. Then, and we're going to play these one at a time. You can all go between picking it down for every note, picking it up for every note, or alternate picking back and forth for every note we're going to play. Because this is more of a left hand exercise, but if you change up your picking and go really, really slow, you will also get your right hand where it becomes better and more proficient at picking as well. So first finger, first fret of the sixth string of the thickest string closest to your head, an F note. Then we're gonna keep that one held down. We're gonna put our second finger on the second fret of that same string, the sixth string. That gives us an F sharp. Then our third finger, your ring finger on the fourth fret, or the third fret, pardon me, of the sixth string. That is a G. And then your pinky on the fourth fret of the sixth string. That is a G sharp. So if you play those in a row, and I'm going real slow, you've got both the number I'm going to give you is both the finger and the fret. So this is on string number six, your thickest string. You have one, two, three, four. Practice that a few times. Go as slow as you need to go. Once you get where you're comfortable doing that on the, hey, brother of mine, working on Guitar 101 uh, lesson or episode two right now, about 20-ish minutes into it, and we're talking about uh, building up dexterity and strength in our left hand so it becomes easier to fret notes. So once you get comfortable getting back to the lesson, folks, once you get comfortable with that sixth string doing one, two, three, four on your fret and on your finger. Remember that number represents both. And I'll call out the, the notes this next time I play just so you can get kind of familiar with that, but don't focus on memorizing that right now. We're gonna do some of that later. So we have F, 
F sharp, G, G sharp. Do it again. F, F sharp, G, G sharp. First fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. First finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. So, what you want to do to continue doing this and get yourself familiar and comfortable with the neck and get your fingers familiar with, with playing notes at different places because it feels very different. You'll notice if you're doing this on the string the closest to your head than it does down here where it's the furthest away from your head. You've got a lot more wood. You've got a lot more of something underneath your hand when you're up here than when you do down here. So what you want to do is you want to take that exercise and you want to go, I guess it'd be laterally, or no, vertically across the neck of the guitar. So do one, two, three, four on string number six, the one closest to your head, then move down to string number five. Go as slow as you need to do, do the same thing on string number five. One, two, three, four. First finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. First fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. The notes on that, just so you know, are B flat, B, C, C sharp, B flat, B, C, C sharp. One, two, three, four. Moving on to the next string, your fourth string. Do the same thing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. First fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. First finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. The notes are D sharp, E, F, F sharp. D sharp, E, F, F sharp. Okay, next string down, the third string. One, two, three, four. First finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. First fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. The notes on this guy, see if I mess this up, I think we'll be good. G sharp, A, A sharp, B. G sharp, A, A sharp, B. Next string. One, two, three, four. First finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. First fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. The notes on this are C, C sharp, D, D sharp. First string, farthest away from you. One, two, three, four. First finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. The notes here are, or pardon me, first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. The notes are F, F sharp, G, G sharp. F, F sharp, G, G sharp. So, practice that a lot, folks. Like I said, go as slow as you need to go on this, but that's really gonna start helping build up strength in your left hand where it makes it easier to fret notes. It's also going to start building up dexterity where your fingers can move around easier and you become more comfortable with it. Also, use all four fingers. When you're first starting out, a lot of people, including me when I first started, have a tendency to do everything we can to not use this guy, to not use your pinky because it doesn't have a whole lot of strength and it really hurts when you first start out playing notes with that, depending on the guitar you're playing and so on, but make sure you use your pinky. So just think of it as counting. One, two, three, four. 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 Okay, do that a lot. Play it to a metronome would be even better. Play it as quarter notes, meaning if you have a metronome, and if you don't have a metronome, Go on the Google Play Store or go on the Apple Store, the I, Apple uh, App Store, and just search for metronome. If you have a smartphone, like those of you watching me where I'm broadcasting off Instagram, there are a ton of apps out there for metronomes. There are also a ton of tuner apps. We'll talk more about that as well before we end today. But get a metronome app. The one I use on my iPhone is just called Metronome or Metronome Free, I think, and it works perfectly for that purpose. It gives you something mobile where you don't have to be tethered 
to a little box or a computer to have a metronome to count for you. Play those as quarter notes as slow as you need to go, meaning set your metronome to a 4-4 four, four time signature. Go as slow as you need to go. It doesn't matter if you set that at 30 beats per second, which means there is one, two seconds between each click of the metronome and play along with that. So I'll tap my foot. Let's say this is a metronome. Play along with it as a quarter note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Practice that a lot. This is climbing up the neck or ascending because you're getting to the higher notes here. Bonus points if you want to get some kudos from your teacher, me, before the next time. And don't feel like you have to do this, but if you want to get some kudos and learn some more, you can also descend that pattern, meaning you can go one, two, three, four, and then go backwards. Four, three, two, one. And mix that up. You could do one, two, three, four, next string, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. However, I feel like maybe I'm jumping a little bit ahead here because I, I, I like a lot of people, I want to know as much as possible. I'm sure a lot of you do as too. So if that feels really awkward, which you probably will doing the descending, just stick with one, two, three, four, but practice that. Also remember, you can change your picking up. If you want to do it all down strokes, watch my right hand. Two, or if you want to alternate, whatever is easiest for you at this point, the biggest point of this exercise is to focus on that left hand, getting those left fingers where they can do stuff, do stuff so they can fret notes. So if it's easier to just do all down picks, do all down picks right now. Don't try to overwhelm yourself by doing too terribly much, but practice that a lot between now and the next time that we meet. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, so. <clears throat> Final thing, let's learn another chord today. I always want to give you guys a chord or something for practical application where you don't feel like you're just sitting playing exercises, but where you actually are making something musical. So remember the last time we learned that, learned that A major chord or the A chord, this guy, which was open fifth string, middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string, middle finger on, or pardon me, ring finger on the second fret of the third string, pinky finger on the second fret of the second string, second fret of the second string, that's a tongue twister, and first string open. So this, an A chord, and you can try practicing that as a down string. So today let's learn, learn an E chord or an E major chord. So you'll have A and E in your repertoire and you can practice them. So an E chord, remember we always want the lowest note in the chord, or preferably for what we're learning right now, we want that to be the bass note or the lowest note. So where do we have a low E on our guitar? If you remember the names of the strings, this guy's an E and this guy's an E. When I say low, I'm saying low pitch. So for an E chord or an E major chord, you want to play that first string, the thickest string, pardon me, the sixth string, the one closest to you, open with no fingers on it. You want to take your, and this is going to seem a little weird initially, but trust me, this is the way you want to play this. You want to take your middle finger, you want to put it on the second fret of string number five. That gives you a B. So, so far we have an open E, and we have second fret of string number five, which is normally an A string, but that gives us a B with that fret. So there's two notes of an A chord. That is your root, which is your E, and your fifth, which is your B. So, you want to take your ring finger, you want to put this on the second fret of string number four. Remember, that's a D string, but that gives us another E note. So we have open sixth string, an E, second fret with our middle finger on the fifth string, a B, and second fret with our ring finger on the fourth string, another E. So that's a root five chord. Now, for it to be a true A major, we also need to add in the third as well. And so what we have for that then is we take our first finger, this guy right here, 
and we put it on the first fret of string number three. Remember, string number three is a G string. Then if we put that on there, that gives us a G sharp. So your E major is E, open sixth string, B, middle finger on the second fret of string number five, another E, ring finger on the second fret of string number four, and G sharp, first finger on the first fret of string number three. And the light's going wonky here, but hopefully you can see that Facebook. So it looks like that. The pinky's not doing anything. The other fingers are like this. String, fret number two on string number five, fret number two on string number four, fret number one on string number three. Okay, the next two notes down here, the open strings are our B string. Let me show you that on Instagram as well. So remember, we've got number two, middle finger on string five, fret number two, ring finger on string four, fret number one, index finger or first finger on string three. We also can play the bottom two notes because they're just re repeats of the other notes. String number two, which remember is a B string, which we also have a B here. And your highest string, which is another E string which we have an E here, and then our open string on the bottom is an E. So, build that chord with me one more time. Open string number six, middle finger, fret number two, string number five, ring finger, fret number two, string number four, index finger, first finger, string fret number one on string number three, string number two, and string number one open. Strum across that. That is an E major chord. So strum that if you don't Get familiar with what that sounds like. So if you put the two of them together, you're not going to be able to jump back and forth real easy when you're first learning this. But if you put the two of them together, you've got A major and E major. And if we alternate our strumming, we change the those fingerings are pretty close to each other. I did that intentionally because these two chords are built pretty similar to each other. That way it's not as hard to learn them when you go from one to the other. So practice that. Practice that E major chord. Practice and you'll have to do it very very slowly and that's okay. Practice changing from your E major that we learned today to your A major that we learned last time. And back to your E major. your A major. So now you have two chords you can put together. That's the beginning of a song, potentially. Maybe not the most technically difficult song in the world when you've been playing for as long as I have. But it's a song nonetheless. So let's just kind of review the things that we learned today to wrap this up. Once again, this lesson's going a little long because I'm a little wordy in case you haven't noticed. I want to make sure I give you enough information as opposed to not giving you enough. So what did we learn today? We first, uh, as far as new things we learned, we started talking about upstrokes on picking. So we had downstrokes previously. Just dragging our hands across the string this way. Down strum, we learned up strums, going the other way. From the highest pitch string, the one furthest away from string number one, down to string number six. Like that. We also learned individual picking notes, down or up stroke as opposed to down. That would be up picking and down picking. And then we also learned alternate picking which is alternating, as it would sound like, between an upstroke and a downstroke. On string number six, it sounds like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then we did a left hand exercise to increase the strength in our fingers in our left hand and to increase our dexterity, which is a fancy way of saying that they're able to move around and you're able to use them better. So what did we do on that? We did the same number of finger on the same fret of the guitar, and we go across all the strings. So just real quickly as an example, on our sixth string, the one the closest to our head, we would do first finger, first fret, second finger, second fret, third finger, third fret, fourth finger, fourth fret.
and go as slow as you need to to do that. Also remember I said grab a metronome app for your phone and play along with that on a metronome. Set your metronome on 4-4 four, four time signature, which gives you four quarter notes. And as slow as it needs to be, even if it's like 20 beats per minute or 30 beats per minute, it doesn't matter. As slow as it needs to be, and each time that metronome goes bing, you play a note. Bing, 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 bing. That will get you where you start getting better with your timing. And trust me, that's going to be something that's going to be very useful as we get further into playing and become more advanced. So we learned that across all the strings of the guitar that you can go up and down all six strings. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Also notice when I'm doing this, I should have pointed this out. <coughs> when we're playing chords, you'll notice that my thumb is kind of up here on the top of the neck. It's almost wrapping over the top of it. But when we're doing individual notes, pick like that to get your finger in the right position. Take your thumb, instead of having it up on the top of the neck like this, bring it back almost where it's right in the middle of the neck where the flat part of your thumb is setting on that. What that does is that rotates your hand around. I'll show you that on Instagram as well. See how it's sitting there? That rotates your hand around instead of your hand being in an angle. It flattens your hand out. You see the difference there? This versus this. That makes it easier for you to pick those individual notes. And as we get more advanced, that makes it easier for you to stretch your hand out for longer reaches as well. So, we learned that left hand exercise, one, two, three, four. We said that we could do that by alternate picking, up or down, up, down, up. You can do it straight down picks to start with, down, 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 or you can do straight up picks. Vary that because that'll help you get better at the different ways of picking. Finally, we learned our E major chord today to go along with our A major. Remember, E major is the open sixth string, no fingers on it at all, the middle finger on the second fret of the fifth string, which that gives us a B. So we have an E with our open string and a B on this fifth string. Ring finger, this guy, on the second fret of string number four, that gives us another E. There are those first three notes. And our first finger, our index finger, on fret number one of the G string. That gives us a G sharp. So we get this. And then we can play the two strings open below it because it's another B and another E. That sounds like this for the whole chord then. And it looks like that when you look at the fretboard. Instagram, you can see that. Open six. Middle finger on fret two of the fifth string. Ring finger on fret two of the fourth string. First finger on fret one of the third string and the other two open. So, and make sure you can see that on Facebook as well. Looks like that. You got finger two here on string number five, fret two. Finger three on fret two, string number four. First finger on the first fret of string number three. And we strum or drag our pick across all six strings. And then you can practice strumming up also or strumming back and forth. As you get more comfortable with that, you can do all kinds of different ways of doing it. So that is it for today, folks. I hope once again that you found this useful. Hopefully this is helping you get a little more comfortable with some basic stuff on how to pick, <coughs> how to get your left hand moving, and how to learn kind of some, some real basic mechanics of how to start doing this thing we call playing guitar. Uh, just as a reminder, these live streams are going to be every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the foreseeable future, starting at 1.15 p.m., evidently running about 45 minutes, because that's what I've done the past two times. This is episode number two. Uh, the live streaming on Instagram and on Facebook. I'm looking into live streaming on YouTube as well, and I got some new gear coming that will help that out, hopefully, in the not-too-distant future here. And then these are going to be rebroadcast or saved where you can view them again anytime you need to on my Facebook page and on my YouTube channel as well. All my socials, if you follow me, that would be awesome. Just so I know that I can answer any questions that you might have. And you're always welcome to DM me or send me a private message or comment on a video. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash Ben France Music. On YouTube, just search YouTube for Benjamin France Music. On Instagram, I am Benjamin France Music, and I am active on Twitter as well if you want to join the Tweet Stormy world with me, and I believe that's under Ben France Music as well. Otherwise, I hope everybody's having a good Friday. I hope you're all staying safe out there. Please take this. <coughs> mm, that's allergies, I promise. That time of year for me. 
Please take this COVID-19 thing going on though seriously though. There are people way younger than you might expect being affected by and having some severe physical issues because of it. I know of a friend of mine has a 21 year old son who's currently in intensive care and is on a ventilator and that sort of thing with no underlying health conditions, but he contracted COVID-19 somehow and is now has quite a fight on his hands. So take it seriously, take this time learn your instruments, stay in your house, be safe. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me, like I said, via any of the social channels or DM me, or you can email me at just benjaminfrankmusic at gmail.com. Otherwise, I hope everybody has a great weekend and stay safe out there and play music, listen to music. It is the universal language that we all can speak no matter where we come from. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. Excuse me.